Are you looking for an inexpensive yet meaningful and thoughtful gift that you can give to family or friends this holiday season or maybe just because? If so, I hope you'll follow along as I alter this composition book. I went to the thrift store and I found a what I thought was an incredible find, which was a set of four placemats. I took one of those placemats and turned it into this altered composition book. And it, I think, makes a great carpet baggy type cover. The first thing I did was pulled all of the um, note pages out of the composition book. You can do that by simply clipping along those threads and pull those out. Then I adhered the placemat to the outside edge of this book with a little bit of glue, took it to my sewing machine and messily sewed. As you can see, all of the little squiggles of the thread inside this book and then trimmed down the cover close to the edge. It is too bulky to fold over. So I trimmed it close and went back and pulled the threads to fray those edges. So it creates a kind of rugged vintage look. Then I pulled out my scrap bin and found some pieces of canvas and pieces of lace and cheesecloth. I'm trimming those down to size with my Fisker. I'm not a good user of scissors with fabric, so I'm putting it on my Fisker and going five by five inches first. And then I'll cut a piece of this coffee stain canvas to four by four inches. So we have some um, framing and definition on that canvas. I also am utilizing a piece of lace that just happened to be at about the right size, a random piece of coffee stained cheesecloth. I will cut another piece of that canvas off into a rectangular piece a small piece of lace and I think we have everything layered up so it creates a pretty interesting focal point on the front cover of this journal. Utilizing fabric fusion to glue everything together. I'm going to put the canvas first, the lace, and then the piece of cheesecloth. I'm going to incorporate in a few threads before the next piece of canvas. Another piece of lace and then I will end with this little rectangular piece because I have a little silver sentiment that is rectangular in shape that I would like to place over the top of this. Once I have that together, I want to attach it to the front of the book and I'm going to attach it in two ways. I'm going to glue it and then I am going to poke holes through the four corners of that um, focal point and insert brads to just hold it and secure it on the front of the book. So we have it glued down and let's mark where we're going to punch those holes. I did the initial hole in that front left but or front right. Let's pull the crocodile in to do that was my first thought. And then I realized that it was very difficult to get it lined up on subsequent holes. So I went back to just my craft pick. I have all of those inserted and in. Not happy with how the big brads look on that uh, rectangular image, uh, rectangular piece in the center. So I pulled those out and going to cover up those holes with an additional piece of fabric. I have some lightweight gold here that I'm going to place over the top of that and another piece of canvas. And then I'll lay my sentiment in place and use my craft pick to poke through the little um, edges or the holes or the places that that was created to adhere. 
and I have these little tiny brads that I am going to utilize to secure that into place. And I think that looks much better than those, those big brads. So that completes the decoration of the front cover. And now to move to the inside. So I think that I think the cover looks good. I keep messing around with some additional threads and thinking something initial, uh, additional, but I don't think it needs it. I hope that you are liking thus far what I am doing here and will take a moment and subscribe to my channel and that like button always helps me. Now for the inside, I am utilizing this uh, plain canvas. It has not been altered in any way. And I'm just tearing it into the approximate size that I need and will take it to my Fisker to, to get it to the right shape. Now, in retrospect, now would have been a good time to either coffee stain that or tea stain it. But I'm too impatient and I didn't want to get it wet and wait for the dry time. So I went ahead and put it in just plain canvas. So let's get that cut to size for both the inside front and the inside back. And I will be utilizing the Yes Paste once again. Now, I know when I open this book, you can see that I've already glued down some gel press printed. I have a magazine pull on one side and just a gel press print on the back. That was my initial thought. And then I decided to attach my focal point with the brad, so I poke through that. And I'm not really liking the way it looks with the overall feel of the book anyway, so I have decided to cover the inside front <clears throat> and the inside back with the canvas material to kind of coordinate with that focal point on the front cover. Now, it does seem a bit stark to me that it has not been tea stained, coffee stained, or dyed. So I'm pulling out my vintage photo stock or my vintage photo spray ink, and I'm just going to spray it. Of course, I got a little too close with the spray and, and created, you know, some circular images, but I'll do my best to uh, cover that up. And we'll go ahead and decorate the inside of that with uh, some additional pieces as well. I have the lace that my initial thought was to put it as kind of a pocket on the outside edge. But as I was looking it over, I thought, well, if I use it there and then I use it to cover my spine, it might be too much on the inside. So I'm just going to stick that into that spine location and leave it at that. I'm pouring down a little bit of glitter glue. Well, not a little bit. I actually dumped out way too much, but we'll spread that glitter glue and we will not have to worry about that lace going anywhere anytime in the near future. So it is securely glued into place. And now <clears throat> to finish the front cover, I'm just deciding how wide I want this diagonal pocket, so I'm marking that. And then I will take that mark, place it on my Fisker, and then just secure that or scooch that over so I get that nice um, triangular cut. And we'll ink that up. Once again, with the vintage photo ink. I do want to put a little indent there in the center, so I'm pulling out that circular punch and centering it up by folding it in half and then cutting that little portion of the circle there. And we'll glue that into place. There we go. Place that down. 
And I think that pile folder looks nice on the inside, but it does need some additional decoration. So we'll decorate that congruent with the front by utilizing fabric scraps. So a little piece of canvas, some thread, a little piece of that placemat. And we have some nice decoration for inside front and inside back. And the inside back, I just glued down that rectangular piece is a belly band. And I'm just decorating, like I said, with the fabric scraps and thread. So I think that looks nice. And to further embellish, we'll come back with the uh, liquid pearls in copper and just dot along the edges of those and I think that looks nice so we'll set that aside and let those uh, pearls and get hardened and dry and then we have the front cover completed as well as the inside front and inside back with a simple composition notebook and one file folder or file folder scraps, some scrap fabric, a few liquid pearls, and you have a complete altered composition book cover. For the inside of the book, I have tea stained all of the pages that I pulled out. Those have dried and I've added some additional papers that I had in stock, some well, that's that's a napkin, tea, tea stained napkin. Um, just scraps from here and there, some jelly press printed pieces, echo dyed pieces, filters, recipe pages, music sheets, some paper bags, and wax napkins. And I am going to create two good sized signatures to sew on the inside of this book with a just a simple pamphlet stitch. Now once I have that complete I want to decorate the spine and to do so I am utilizing beads that I have made from magazine pages and I just keep those in a wine glass in my workstation. I'm pulling out the colors that I think are going to complement the book and I will thread those on a piece of sorry silk. And I have this um, off-white sorry silk. I'm going to grab a couple of charms that I think will look good dangling on the bottom. And I'm also going to pull in the scraps of that placemat. As I cut it down to size there and trimmed it to the edges, there are a lot of long skinny pieces that I am also going to use on this spine embellishment. So threading the beads on, once I get all the beads threaded on, I'm going to come back with just um, wads of random pieces of string that I've saved off of other projects that is in my my scrap bin and I'm going to twist those threads around those beads up and down that um, piece of sari silk. So as a completed piece you have the sari silk, the magazine paper beads, a bunch of string that is just twisted down. I'm not gluing it into place. I'm just twisting it tightly around the sorry silk and beads and it is holding itself in place. I will knot the end of both. I will knot both of the ends to keep the beads from from falling off. And there you can see me wrapping those threads. So that completes the spine embellishment. I hung it on a bulldog clip and the book is complete. The pamphlet stitch is holding in two signatures. And I think this creates a pretty thoughtful and meaningful gift for a family member or friend. And I hope that you will join me for future 
endeavors in these composition books. The playlist is right here and you can see the ones that I have made previously. There's quite a few already loaded into that playlist. So please subscribe to my channel. That like button does give my channel a boost and I do appreciate that as well as all of your comments. Bye for now.